Welcome back. Now, our colleague, good friend, Ryan Bechu, he continues to cover the COP27 discussions in Egypt. He managed to secure an interview with the UN Executive Secretary, who is leading the climate change conference. Uh, Ryan, good morning, and I look forward to uh, this particular report. Well, good morning to you, Jason. It was a massive opportunity to be able to sit down one-on-one -on -one and interview Simon Steele, who is the UNFCCC uh, Executive Secretary, only recently appointed by the UN General Secretary, Antonio Gutierrez. He was actually appointed on August 15th. He's truly a Caribbean man. He hasn't lost that Caribbean in him, although he now holds a very important international post. It was just a 10-minute window we had, Jason, sandwiched between meetings that he had with world leaders, CARICOM leaders. He also had to visit the plenary to deliver a speech. So it was a pretty short window, but I thought we were allowed, uh, you know, enough time to get in a lot in that 10-minute window. We spoke about geopolitics. We spoke about his influence and the Caribbean's influence uh, on this conference, as well as, uh, you know, the negotiations that are ongoing and of course a major part of our discussions uh, were uh, loss and damage funding he's a Caribbean man he's seen the impact climate change is having the effects climate change is having on the Caribbean so I asked him a little bit about what would success look like for Simon Steele if loss and damage funding is to be negotiated if there is to be a compromise I want to play that clip for you and I'll talk about it on the other side Having a robust process that outlines all of the elements that speak to um, addressing loss and damage, speak to the funding arrangements that is time bound, that um, lays out a roadmap uh, to a final decision as to um, how this will be treated um, in the near term would be a success. Yeah, I also further explored that question in the sense of the intensive disconnect, Jason, that I've spoken to you about on your program over the last two weeks between developed nations and developing nations. In fact, I can tell you that EOSIS, along with the LDCs, the least developed countries here at COP27, will be holding a joint press conference at 12.30 Egyptian time. So you can look out for the contents of that uh, because it has been a frustrating process, as I understand it, to be the negotiations between the developed countries and the developing countries here at COP27. Now, interestingly, I also asked uh, the executive secretary about what he thinks he brings to this role. You know, he's one of the very first uh, developing country executive secretaries that the UNFCCC has had. Uh, and it's interesting that he brings to, to this role, he comes to this role, rather, I should rather say, at a very interesting point in time where developing countries are finding a voice and where developing countries are using that voice against the developed countries. You listen to Mia Motley, you listen to Gaston Brown, I asked him what he thinks, being from the Caribbean, coming from the Caribbean, what that means to the UNFCCC and the role that he is now in. As a Caribbean man, somebody who has, uh, who has a working and living experience in the islands, the front line um, of, um, of climate change, um, I bring a personal perspective, that lived experience into what is a highly technical, um, highly political um, discussion. Yeah, that was Simon Steele, the UNFCCC Executive Secretary, talking to me one-on-one -on -one in an exclusive interview, Jason, here at the COP27 conference. I'll have much more on this interview l throughout the day in the midday newscast, as well as the 7 p.m. news tonight. And you can also look out for a full report in the TNT Guardian newspaper in the coming days. You won't want to miss what Simon Steele had to say in the longer form. I've just played two excerpts for you. But it was really an interesting conversation and one that I thoroughly enjoyed. For now, from COP27 uh, here in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt, Jason, uh, forgive the wind. It's a very windy afternoon here in Sharm El Sheikh, Egypt. I'm handing it back to you. But if there is any progress or if there is anything to update you on, I'll be sure to do that.